Hey everyone, this is Anthony from TheDistro.com. Today we're going to be downloading and installing OpenSUSE Linux version 11.3 and we're going to be installing it on VirtualBox 4. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to get OpenSUSE. I'm just going to go to the website. I'm going to click get it. So now we're here at the download page, but before we go any further, I'd just like to give you a bit of heads up about some. See, you can download either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version, and VirtualBox supports 64-bit if you want to run it as a guest operating system. But even if you have a 64-bit PC, you might run into a problem. So before doing this, let me just let you know. Just because your operating system is 64-bit, it doesn't mean that your CPU will support virtualization technology. It just so happens that my CPU doesn't support virtualization technology. So if you want and, you, and you're sure that your CPU does, you could download the 64-bit. It's not going to make a difference for us. I'm going to just download the 32-bit because that's what my CPU supports. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Download DVD. I'm just going to save it. And this is a pretty big DVD. It's uh, almost 5 gigs. So this might take a little while. So I'm just going to pause it and I'm going to pick it up when it's finished downloading. Okay, so it finished downloading and it is on my desktop. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open up VirtualBox. And we're going to just set it up to be configured right for our first time run of OpenSUSE Linux. So what you're going to do is you have VirtualBox open. You go ahead in the top left hand corner, you click on this new icon right here. Now you're going to just follow the wizard for the new virtual machine. Go ahead and click next. Alright, in the name box, once you start typing in the operating system, there's a good chance that it's going to recognize it. So I put OpenSUSE and I like putting the version number just in case I want to try out a different version of this at a later time so it already detected as my operating system being Linux and the version being open to say if it didn't detect this you'd be able to change this yourself and it would be fine so I'm just gonna hit next alright here we select the amount of memory that we want to allocate to our virtual machine I have 8 gigs of RAM on my computer so um, I can safely put up to about 5 gigs. You want to stay within your green zone. This is your safe zone right here. I usually, you don't need to usually give a virtual machine more than 2 gigs, especially if it's Linux. You can, if you only have 2 gigs, you can get away with giving it 512 or between 512 and 1 gig. You could just, you could play around with it. You could see how your computer runs with a certain amount of space allocated to it this isn't set in stone you can change this later so don't worry about that you could test it out however much you want to give it now that's fine go ahead and click next okay so the next step is for us to create a virtual hard disk so you want to make sure is checked right here and you want to also make sure that create new hard disk is checked so we're going to hit next and this uh, new uh, hard disk wizard is going to pop up so we're going to hit next again and I'm going to stick with dynamically expanding storage that means that if you want to give it 15 gigs of space from your computer and you install it and you only use about 5 gigs and you use a little bit more maybe you end up using 10 it's not going to take up that extra space until you actually use it so it's pretty efficient on space and I like to stick with this one 
I'm gonna hit next. All right, so now we're just gonna decide how big we want our virtual hard drive to be and where we want it to be stored. If you have an external hard drive that maybe has more space and you wanna store it on there, you can go ahead and change the location by clicking this icon and you can put it wherever you want. I'm gonna stick with the default location and now we're gonna select the size of our virtual disk. As you already saw, the the ISO image for OpenSUSE was about five gigs. It's pretty big. I'm gonna go ahead and give it 20 gigs. If you don't have 20 gigs, you can give it less. You can give it eight. I'm gonna give it a little more in case we end up doing something in the future with this. So I'm gonna hit next. And it's going to bring up your summary, it's going to tell you the size, where it's stored, and the type that you chose. So I'm just going to hit finish. I'm going to hit finish again. And there it is. Now in your VirtualBox Manager, when you first open it up, you should see a new tab that says Open Suse, or whatever you named it. So if we went ahead and tried to start this right now, nothing would happen. We didn't tell it where the ISO was, so we need to do that first and we need to do some setup. Okay, so now that we have this here, I'm going to select this and I'm going to hit settings at the top. So we just want to configure this for our first time use. So. I'm going to go down and you can play around with this, check it out, explore it. I'm going to go down to system. This is where you can change your uh, RAM that you allocated to it. If you have like a quad core processor, you can give more processors to your virtual machine. So I'm going to go and... I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna go down to display and I'm gonna click enable 3D acceleration. This is if you want those cool desktop effects, if you wanna be able to, maybe you wanna put compass on it and you wanna have those cool effects. So I'm gonna give it a little more video memory. 32 megabytes is fine. I'm gonna go down to storage and this is a very important part this is where we tell VirtualBox where the ISO image that we downloaded from the OpenSUSE website is so this is gonna act as if you downloaded the disk you burnt it and now you're putting it into your uh, CD drive and you're gonna run it so I'm gonna hit click this icon here I'm gonna click choose disk and I'm just going to navigate to my desktop where it's downloaded. So now this is set up and you could see in the SATA controller that's where your virtual hard disk that you created is. So I'm going to just go down to network and I'm going to select bridge adapter and I'm just gonna change this to my wireless card you may not have the same settings so you could play around with this you can if you wanted to you can add up to four different adapters here and you could put one as NAT one as bridge you could see what works for you if you don't know the difference between a NAT or a bridge adapter you can check out my blog post on VirtualBox versus VMware and it'll give you a little description on that and maybe help you on which one to choose. So everything else is fine. I'm going to hit OK. And now we are ready to start this virtual machine and install it. And that will be part two of this video series. Thank you for watching and I'll see you back in a short while.